right? Like, um, there's also Photoshop, which is used for more of the uh, hardcore editing of photos, where you can actually add effects and things. Lightroom, I would say, is more for like touching up photos and then like little details here and there. That being said, um, last question is: Have any of you used Photoshop or any other photo so photo editing software? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, again, this Lightroom editing workshop will be based on Lightroom, so it's gonna. I'm uh, mainly gonna go over Lightroom and. Yeah, there's just multiple ways to go about it. So a bit of a disclaimer, um, I'm not gonna be talking about how to take photos, but that's like a whole other thing on its own. This is mainly just to touch up photos after you've already taken them and how to work with them. Um, second thing is, so I'm mainly gonna go over the basic controls of Lightroom and like the different things you can do with Lightroom. And I'm gonna go over my flow of like working with F photos. Um, there's multiple ways to go about editing your photos depending on your style. But yeah, I'm gonna specifically go with mine. Um, I'll go with one photo that I've worked with before and I'll show you like, the photo um, from the very beginning and then I'm actually going to edit it and walk you through the process that I did in order to create the final product. And the second one, if we have more time, I'll go through another photo that I haven't worked with before. So that'll be a little more interesting for me um, just because Good luck. I'll be working on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, without further ado, I guess I'll just go right into it. Give me a second. Wow. Okay, so I've already logged onto Lightroom. Wait, what the heck? This is not the kind of display I wanted. Sorry, one sec. It's okay, I forgive you. <laughs> okay, so I've already logged onto Lightroom. Um, that being said, the first thing that you're gonna do, you're gonna notice that there's an import button. This is where you actually bring in your photos from your desktop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna import photos from one of the shoots that I had recently. And more specifically, I'm gonna be working with the landscapes here. Um, and then there's another one that I imported already. Uh, let's see. And I'll be working with these photos if I have time. But mainly I'm going to be working with the landscapes that I have here. So to import, you're going to click on the squares here. Um, some You'll notice that some of these photos are grayed out. That's because they're already imported. Once you've imported it, then it's already in here. You're going to have to find it in the catalog elsewhere. But these ones aren't imported yet. So you're going to click here, import the photos, and they'll import. And then you'll notice that they pop up here on this little grid on the bottom, right? Um, so I guess, which one do you want me to work with out of the four? I guess, like they're all kind of similar, but... The one, one of the moon. The one of the moon. moon. Bottom left or bottom, oh, upper oh, right? Oh, right. Right. Oh. Top right. Top right, okay. So <laughs> for this, you're going to click on it, hit D. That's going to start the development process, and you're going to notice that the shot is like this, right? So what do you notice about this picture, like, first of all? There's a cute branch on the right. There's a cute branch <laughs> on the right. All right, what else do you notice about this picture? There's a little glare, like, from the lights. A little bit of glare from the lights, yeah. Um, anything else? Like, what about colors or anything? I like colors. It's like <laughs> relaxing. Okay. The back's kind of red. Not very, like, Not very saturated, okay. So yes, um, totally agree with all those different points. So the first thing that someone pointed out was that there's a branch on the right, yes. <laughs> that bothered me a lot as well, <laughs> but I couldn't get it out of the shot. So that being said, the first thing that I usually do with photos is I crop them. So uh, um, we're gonna get rid of this branch right here, and we're actually gonna move this up a bit. Um, you're gonna notice right here there's a lot of black space, and that's just kind of filling up the picture, so you can crop it, and then you can try to change like where it pops up. Okay, so you're gonna, I generally just mess around and see how it changes over time and like how I like the shot to be and then I'll just let it stick with that. So after kind of cropping your photo, um, you're gonna want to look at colors. Another person mentioned like another thing was colors, um, but for that I'm gonna hold off on that for now. I'm first gonna go through all the basic things right here on the side, okay? So you're gonna notice that there's a bunch of these different sliders and there's a bunch of different things that are noticed here. So these top two ones are mainly gonna talk about color temperature and the colors within the photo. So let's see what happens when I slide this one. So this one's going to be more of a uh, blue versus yellow. So if you want a cooler picture, slide it to the left. You'll notice Whoa. that colors change, right? Significantly. If you move it to the right, then it becomes more warm, right? That's right. Um, mm -hmm. If you have no idea what you just did and you want to undo everything, double click the slider and it pops back to normal. Oh. Another thing you can do with this is you can click here and you can actually type in values. So let's say I wanted 2400 exactly, right? So blue. Then you can just go ahead and make it blue. Otherwise, um, I love it like slowly slide it around yeah um tell me when you think the photo is good all the way to the right <laughs> so let's say like do you want it cooler or warmer warmer warmer, warmer. Yeah. okay i'm gonna leave it around here for now okay 
So you're gonna notice like you're gonna have a little more color right here, and you're gonna notice that you're gonna have more color up here, right? So after you kind of mess with this, you have the other one now. That's tint, as it says. But then this one's gonna be messing with green and purple, whereas the other one was messed with blue and yellow, right? So then with this one, um, I'm not gonna play too much with this one, but I'm gonna add a bit of purple tinge to it. So generally, you're gonna to wanna to play with these colors when you want to like recreate a certain effect or add a certain effect. With cooler colors, that's more like, oh, um, you want a lighter feel, let's say that it's early dawn, you're gonna get more of a bluish kind of feel. Let's say you wanna recreate that, you can use blue colors on the left. On the other hand, if you're shooting at golden hour, which is around sunset, um, which is around like 5 p.m. nowadays, um, you're gonna to wanna to mess with the yellow one, maybe, potentially and you're going to create warmer fields. Um, the bottom one, I don't mess with that one too much just because I don't work with green and purple as much. But oh, then, yeah. um, specifically for me, it's because I just personally don't like working with purple <laughs> All right. too much. But for this specific one, um, I guess we'll just kind of create like an evening feel. I get like this evening feel off of like purple a little bit, right? It's like a little dusky kind of feel. Okay, moving on from that though. So you're going to notice you're going to have a bunch of other things. These things primarily mess with the blacks and whites within the picture. So exposure, um, what do you think this one does? It's higher, it's like lighter, right? It's lighter. And what happens if it's lower? It's like darker. Darker. Exactly. So if you increase the exposure, then it does get lighter. And then you're gonna notice that if you decrease it, it gets darker as well. Um, generally, you're not gonna wanna make it too bright because once you do, you're gonna start destroying colors within the picture. You're gonna notice that up here, there's a histogram as well. As you pull it to the right, you'll notice that this starts pulling to the right as well. So let's say we pull it all the way to the right. You're going to notice Whoa. that colors completely disappear Stay off time. the picture, right? <laughs> like, colors are literally destroyed. <laughs> um, this kind of reflects that, so like you'll notice as you pull it, it pulls further to the right until eventually they're kind of just not discernible as much. But yeah, um, let's make it a little bright, but not too much, okay? So, thus far we've messed with cropping, we've messed with a bit of color temperature, and now we've messed with a bit of exposure, okay? That's usually the first three things I go with. And contrast, <coughs> this just adds contrast to the picture. Does everyone know what contrast is? Yeah, it's like how s separate the colors are, I guess. Like how <laughs> unique they are, I don't know. But um, yeah, that's contrast. And then if you're gonna pull it to the left, it will also make it blur out with like more grays and stuff. Too far to the right, you'll get too much contrast, the colors might become a little bit <coughs> more saturated, right? Um, we'll mess with color saturation a little more later on. Yeah, for now, let's just kind of leave it like this, okay? So let's talk about highlights. So highlights are going to be more of your brighter lights. But in this case, you'll notice that these ones pop up a lot more when I pull it over. Like your cool lights, literally. It messes with lights, and then as you pull it back, they're going to drop the highlights, okay? Um, for shadows, you're not really going to see too much effect in this one just because of the shot that's created. But let's say you're working with like a face. You're gonna see shadows, and let's say like the shadows across this way. The more you pull it to the left, the darker the shadows will be. Alternatively, if you pull it to the right, um, the shadows disappear. You're gonna get less shadows. With shadows, I usually only work with them during portrait shots, just because that's where shadows are really noticeable. This is a landscape though, so that's a little different. Now then, um, whites, this is pretty similar to highlights. Um, to be very honest, I don't know the exact differences between the two. Do you happen to know that, like highlights and whites? Highlights and whites. Yeah. I, um, I'd say like shadows are probably what the like Lightroom would decide is a shadow versus blacks do the actual color of it. Oh, wait, highlights and whites though. Oh, then I guess flip that argument for the whites. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I mean they're fairly similar, and I generally just look to see what effects they'll do create. To be very honest, if someone has like a more concrete answer or like yeah, finds I... out more about it, definitely hit me up and like let me know. <laughs> oh, this is what it is. Like maybe it's about shadows and things like that. But yeah, um, as far as I know, that's not something I'm too involved with. Yeah, blacks, same thing. It's gonna be decreasing blacks, um, just like it works with whites. Now that with this particular shot, um, something really interesting that you'll notice is that. Oh wait, maybe it's like shadows and blacks are the difference between like relative and absolute darkness in the picture. So it's like blacks is probably like more the abs like toning down the absoluteness, okay. and then shadows like the relative. Relative, that would make sense. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that could be it. But yeah. Um, I'm just gonna move on with this picture though. So I kind of went through all these really quickly, but like very generally, these will be messing with like your your how much your 
um, whites and blacks will pop out with contrast really affecting that as well. But contrast will also affect color. We'll talk about color more here though. But yeah, um, just to recap, we did, we did cropping first, then we did color temperatures with cooler and warmer colors, and then a little bit of tint as well. And then we worked the exposure of it just to make the color, um, the picture pop out a little more. So let's look at what we've done thus far to edit this picture. So right here you notice that there's these two little things right here. If you click on it, you'll notice the before wow. and after picture. Oh. <laughs> so you'll notice that with this one, there's a lot more colors and there's a lot more pop to it. Um, arguably there's a little too much as well, but then you can just kind of compensate for that later. But um, if you click on it, you can kind of zoom in and see like the different things. It's pretty. So one thing that you're going to notice probably is the fact that it's really grainy. Right, um, this isn't something I can compensate for right now. This is just the effect of the shot that I made. Just lower ISO. But uh, yeah, yeah, actually that was an issue. <laughs> so yeah, um, when you're shooting at night, um, here's a little camera bit just randomly. But then when you're shooting at night, you're gonna have huge issues with noise. So you're gonna notice that it's very grainy. You're gonna get a lot of grain just based on the fact that you're shooting at night. There's not a lot of light available. And you're gonna have to overcompensate by increasing the light sensitivity of your camera or possibly like messing with shutter speeds and apertures. Um, your lens will matter a lot too when you're marking with this, but basically um, generally at night, you're gonna have issues with like grain and like noise and stuff like this. Not too much you can do about it unless you get a better lens or you get flashes and stuff like that, but yeah, that's beyond the scope of what we're talking about. But anyways, so again, you're gonna notice that the pictures are pretty different, right? Like you're gonna notice a more purplish sky, more colors. Lights pop out a lot more here. <coughs> so let's jump back to the original one now. So. With all these different things that we've done, you'll still notice that the lights are not popping out as much as maybe you'd like. That's where clarity comes in handy. Um, clarity is something that you can work with in order to either make it more detailed and like a lot more defined, or you can blur everything. Damn. So that's like the simple <laughs> part of clarity. Um, slight caveat to clarity though, generally in landscapes it works pretty well. But then with portraits, let's say you're working with people, I'll go into this a little more later on. But then clarity is going to be an issue if you increase it too much because then you'll start darkening their features. And you'll notice like some pictures, um, you'll get this kind of grainy feel and like you'll see grains on their face. It's because their clarity oftentimes is too high. And you'll just see like blacks and stuff like that within their face, um, which might not be desirable. But with a shot of like landscapes and stuff like that, clarity is generally good just because you get to see more of like the land and the details. So we just very quickly went over all that stuff. Now, back to vibrance. So vibrance is a very fancy term to say color. When you increase <laughs> vibrance, you're gonna see more colors popping out, right? Like you're gonna see a lot more crazy colors coming out. Like they're gonna pop out in the wow. mind. No, no. And like, so the thing about vibrance though is that you're gonna be careful of oversaturating again, right? That's where saturation comes in handy. Yeah. You're gonna make the colors more defined, and you're gonna slightly compensate with saturation by dropping saturation. And you'll, you'll notice that you'll get this slight trade off where it's like, okay, if you start dropping saturation without changing vibrance, it starts blackening out. Like everything starts going towards like the grayscale area. And the second you start increasing vibrance, your colors will come back. And then you'll notice that, like, oh, it starts changing the picture, and then you're just gonna have to play with it. Like a lot of times, um, Lightroom, I wanna say, is about experimenting. And seeing what the different sliders, yeah. That's how I learned. <laughs> I learned just by experimenting and working with all these different things and like seeing like, oh, what do I like? We, um, these are basically the very basic controls at the top. And these, these are all global um, edits though. So what I mean by that is if you change anything within these areas, it will affect the entire picture versus like a single area. So let's say you want to work with a specific area, right? Um, what would you do? Well, one choice you have is to choose an adjustment brush and that allows you to oh wait um, To basically choose certain areas by clicking and painting over it. So before we I work with this brush up, I'm gonna click here um, This basically allows you to see where you're brushing without it. It disappears. So you're not really able to see what's happening um, Generally, I like to like actually brush over it and then work with it Just so I know what's working and then I'll make it disappear and then I'll start playing with sliders. So again, once it's been brushed over and you're in the adjustment brush panel, once you, you'll notice that a lot of the colors and like all the different controls are the same. The difference is now that you're brushed something, it's only gonna apply to the brushed area. So let's work a bit with this guy here. Um, if I were to change this, then you'll notice that only this area changes colors, right? And if I kept deepening it, 
literally only this area changes. Everything else stays the same, right? Looks photoshopped. But let's go ahead and leave it around here. <laughs> it looks pretty photoshopped, yeah. And then one of the really cool things about adjustment brushes is you can also change clarity. So once you do that, um, let's say you want to make like the sky pop out a little more than like the background, change the clarity of it, and then you'll see things like this, right? So let's see what we've done thus far now. Jumping Whoa. back, you'll notice that wow. the colors have changed a lot. This is your before picture, and this is your after, wow. right? I'm proud of you. Like everything is just popping out <laughs> way more. Um, again, the whites are a little too light for my eyes right now, but that's something like that's your choice to choose. Between. And then if you click on it um, right here, you can actually see like different ways of seeing. Like right now, they're side to side, top and bottom, down, and then like you'll have something like this. And then I believe if you choose here. What's your oh, wait, favorite? No, that one. What's my favorite? Yeah. I'm sorry, what do you mean my favorite? My favorite, like, you know, left and right, split, whatever. Ooh, um, generally it's actually probably just... Wait. What did I do? Okay, um, generally I like just using this one at first, just so I can see, like, the main contrast. And then if I want to work with a specific area, I'll click into it. Let's say I want to talk about the moon. Or you can click into it and you'll notice like, oh, like, it's super zoomed up. This is really bright compared to that one, right? It's like a side-by-side -side comparison kind of thing. But yeah, um, that's kind of the basic controls that I use to work with this specific picture. Um, you can argue that like colors are still way too bright, but I'm not going to play with that. Like, you can fine-tune different things to make it like really pop in a certain way. And let's say you have like certain subjects that you really want to stand out. Um, that's where adjustment brush comes in handy. And then I'll talk about the other filters and other effects up here as well. So with this one, this is probably the closest thing you'll get to Photoshop on Lightroom. Um, it's called Spot Removal, okay? The really cool thing about this one is that, let's say you don't want the moon to be there. <laughs> now, let's click on it and let's see what happens. Um, it creates an area Ooh. and it literally blocks it out. So what's happening is, you'll notice that this area right here is circle and there's an arrow pointing to this area. It literally takes this place and pastes it over. So if I were to reverse this, then I could create two moons. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> and like you'll notice like there's certain ways to play with it. Um, you'll notice that over here, the settings for the controls have changed as well. So size, um, it clearly controls circles. And then feather. So this one's going to be more about like trying to make it less discernible in the edges. So you notice that this one's very clear cut circle. And then... It's the second button. I'm sorry? Uh, the one right next to the rectangle on the oh, top. Right. Yeah, yeah, that one. I was shooting the radio. It's okay, I forgive you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes were made. But yeah, um, again, you're going to notice that it's like super, uh, you know, just kind of popping out like crazy. Um, if you feather it, then you'll notice like it's basically trying to compensate for the edges so that the edges aren't as defined, so that it kind of blends in as well as possible. Now then, um, let me get rid of this actually for now because that bothers me so much. Uh, too much though. <laughs> too much though, yeah. Okay, so we're back to here. Um, so that's the spot removal, literally used to take one spot and paste it over another to get rid of something that you don't want. So when is this useful? It's when you have something within your shot that you want to get rid of. The branch. Yeah, like the branch <laughs> or something. Yeah, like you could probably, if you were clever enough. Um, figure out a way to paste stuff over here to make this disappear and make it look like it was never there. Um, spot removal is going to be a lot of work though, depending on what you're working with. And a branch is not something I want to work with right now. <laughs> yeah, but then uh, there's other ways to do it. It's not just a circle. If you click and hold, you can paint areas like this as well. And you could literally make like another city a in the sky. city. Who knows? Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's one way you can play with it. Um, that, again, that's the closest you'll probably get to Photoshop within Lightroom. And yeah, moving on from that, um, red eye correction. <coughs> I mean, there's no... So red eyes usually happens when um, you fire flash within a, a camera for a person, and then their eyes will show up as red just because of how the colors come out. So what, with red eye correction, it's just trying to compensate for the fact that your flash create another color. Um, with a gradient tool, what this one will do is you can drag it, and you'll notice like these lines will pop up, okay? So let's see. Again, you're gonna notice that this is a local adjustment, so you can play with the sliders and it'll only affect a certain area. So the question then becomes what area does it affect? <gasps> Whoa. 
So with this one, the gradient tool makes it so that this is your dividing line, and then every line below this one will be affected by the changes that I do here. So if I made an exposure drop, everything up to here would be dropped. Um, and then it's a gradient, so that means that the effect of the, whatever effects you apply here decreases as the closer you get to the middle line. Okay, is there any questions so far as well about any of this? Because I know I'm going super fast. Yeah, um, this is the gradient tool. The other way that you can work with this is you can, if I can somehow do it right now. Okay, I totally can't do it right now. It's okay, I believe in you. You can also rotate it so that it applies the other way. Ooh, Ooh that yeah. looks good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can rotate it to apply it the other way as well. Um, so yeah, that's the gradient tool for you. And then again, you can mess with the dish adjustments here just to create different effects, right? Like you can add blue, make it darker, do whatever you want. And yeah. Spooky. <laughs> Happy Halloween, guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's pretty much all about just playing with different colors and stuff. And like at that point, you just have a lot more freedom. But yeah, um, that is the gradient tool. And the last one I'll talk about for the local adjustments is the radial filter. So with this one, you're going to circle a certain area, and you can either choose to have the effects apply within the circle or outside the circle. Um, again, you're going to have notice that the controls are very similar, if not the same. And the way that you're going to decide whether or not to apply inside or outside, so right now it's applying outside, is you're going to go over here, and you'll notice that it says right here, it says invert mask. If you invert it, it applies it within. And you're going to notice that there's a feather as well again. With the feather, this decides how much you want to make the contrast pop out, right? Like, if you want less um, discernible boundaries, increase the feather. If you want more, then just make sure that feather is like zero. And then you'll notice, like, okay, it's a very clearly defined spot where something's been applied. <laughs> but yeah. So that's with all the basic controls for messing with a landscape. And yeah, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, um, a couple other things. So this is a tone curve. I don't play with this too much. The only way, the only times that I do is when I want to apply a mat, which means that there's like, oh man, how do I? Have you ever noticed the film film kind of look to a photo? Like it's mm -hmm. kind of filmy, it's kind of like waxy, mm -hmm. I guess is the easiest yeah. way to describe it. So how they apply that is they usually play with the tone curve. Um, the easiest way to go about it is to just click here. That'll anchor it, and that'll allow you to pull here or here with this as your reference point for the center. So if you if you want to mat it, then you can pull it up, and you'll notice that it creates like this filmy look to it, right? Like the colors start blurring out in a certain way. And with the tone curve, what's happening is it's applying certain effects to the highlight shadows, whites, and blacks in order to create the certain effect. Now let's look at what happens when you do the opposite. Then your blacks become harsher and your colors become much more defined, right? So if you go up with the, this anchor, then you can map the photo. If you go down, then you'll create more defined features. Yeah. And that I again, I don't play too much with the tone curve beyond this, so I can't speak from like of how do you yeah really use this well. I, I just don't use it that often. You can also change the different channels like red, green, blue. <laughs> Right, green. Oh yeah, these ones? Uh, up. Where it says channel. Oh, channels, yeah. Yeah, and then like you can cause like the like the red pixels to yeah. change and stuff. Nice. Do you work with this a lot more? Um, sometimes if I want to get capture specific effect. Oh cool. Do you want to talk about it all? Um, I mean, that's all there is to it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically... Just play around with it. Yeah, again, it's just playing around with it, so then, like you said, you can mess with the green pixels, Ooh. add green and stuff like that, right? Or you can mess with blue, red, and then red, green, blue all at once again, which will be more of like applying to all three at once, which means you're probably messing with shadows, highlights, blacks, and whites. But yeah, um, beyond this, there's also the bottom ones. So you notice that all the different colors are listed here. Okay, this one's one of my favorite ones just because it allows you to manipulate certain colors. Now with this one, it is again a lot of trial and error, unfortunately. So let's notice how many reds are going to be applied. Like, you don't really see too much difference. You'll see a little difference here in the lights. But basically what you're doing is you're deciding how much red you want in your photo. And very generally for all of them, you're deciding what colors you want to pop out in your photo. And like, to what scale. So let's say you wanted to create an orange. You take all the oranges and you make them purple. Or like, you can pull it over and they'll make them yellow. So you're taking all the orange colors and you're, make, you're pulling them a certain way. 
So let's say like for a very real life example, if we chose yellow and we wanted yellow to be pulled over to like orange, <laughs> then their shirts would become orange essentially. So you're manipulating colors and directly pulling them in a certain way. Um, how many colors can you manipulate within your picture? That depends on your shot. And you'll notice like as you change these sliders, certain ones will dis decrease or increase. And yeah, it is a lot of experimenting, just trying to get that right balance. Um, so then with blue, you'll notice that as I pull it, everything up here becomes like super green or like more, more towards purple, you know, depending on what you want. Um, yeah, so then these are the sliders for right here. Do you know anything about split toning? Because I don't usually work with that. <laughs> yes, uh, split toning, what it usually does is it takes like, it converts that into a sort of black and white photo, but instead of black and white, the blacks are one color and the whites are another color. So if you hit highlights, if you hit the box of highlights, mm -hmm. and then change that to a color, green, then it shows like all of the white mm -hmm. pixels turn become dyed into that green color. Nice. You can do the same thing with the shadows. And how would you go about choosing? What do you mean? Oh, shadows right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, if you click the box and you can change it to a different color. Usually, um, one of, like, I, I'm sure you've seen in, like, like, wedding photos or whatever where it looks like, like, it looks like a sepia kind of thing, but the shadows are kind of bluish and it makes mm. that cool effect. That's usually what they do, and in, in, in that specific case it's called duotone. Or, okay, yeah, cool. I think. Okay, so yeah. So this split toning, um, just to kind of recap, you're manipulating colors within either highlights or shadows, and you're essentially choosing them based on the sliders here. So if you choose highlights, if you chose certain colors for highlights, it'll apply that to all the different highlights within the picture. And then you'll be able to see the saturation like change with it as well. So like how much you want it to pop out within your photo. Same thing applies for shadows. Um, a really quick trick that I want to mention as well. So let's say you're wanting to play with highlights, right? And you wanted to only look at highlights. So oh wow, that's cool. What button? You're gonna hold that? Alt. Okay. That's and cool. then you're gonna slide it. That'll show you what applies. And like, very generally, you're gonna see like what pops out and what doesn't. And um, yeah, that's one way to play with it. And you'll notice like, okay, as you increase it and you start noticing more colors, the picture itself will become way brighter, right? Is that only for highlights, or can you do it for other? You can sliders? do it for everything else too, like shadows. Whoa. Like shadows. Oh, wow. The start. The second you start seeing the black appear, it means that your colors are being destroyed again and like your colors are just disappearing off the picture and all you see is black. Pull it away and you'll start seeing more things appear, right? Um, same thing with whites, of course. Yeah, you'll start seeing like these crazy colors pop out. Um, be the reason that you'll see the little bits of white within the black is because you'll notice that these areas are the areas where lights are and you'll notice that the colors themselves are like super bright, right? It's just showing the very bright areas within your picture. So yeah, um, generally you're going to want to tone that down so that it goes back to normal. Um, I wouldn't advise just using this to decide how you want, how much you want to adjust these though, because sometimes it just doesn't look good. But it is one way of going about it, just in case like you can't really decide like, oh, how do you want to do it, you know? So yeah, as you can see, um, again, that's holding Alt down and really pulling the sliders back and forth. Yeah, um, that could be useful, I imagine, for this portion as well. <laughs> Sorry, just playing with it a bit. <laughs> yeah, um, that's very quickly everything for the upper portion. So the last thing is sharpening. Um, with this one, it's going to be talking a lot more about... Remember how we talked about the fact that there's a lot of noise? Or like, there's going to be a lot of grays in the background. The question becomes, how much do you want these grays to pop out? Because if you increase the sharpening, they'll be a lot more defined. And when you pull back out, the picture does become slightly more defined, but not so much. Like, you'll notice if I drop it all the way, these things start to disappear a bit. And I'm going to increase it again, these things pop out a little more. Um, the issue with changing this, though, is the bigger you make your picture, the more <coughs> blown up everything else will be, and the more defined your grains will be. For this purpose, it's okay, just because you don't see the change as much. But let's say we blow up the picture to be the size of this entire TV. Then you start noticing the grains a lot more, and that might be an issue depending on how big you like you're producing your picture to be. So compensate for that based on your size and like just overall what kind of presentation you'd be expecting to have, right? Like if we blew up the picture and put it on the wall, you wouldn't want like a bunch of grains to pop out. You want to have as little like these grainy black dots as possible. Um, with radius, this is just going back to the fact that like um, just the size of the grains again. And detail, um, it's a little bit like sharpening, and it's going to increase the clarity of the grains as well. 
Masking is going to do the opposite. It's going to try and make sure that the grains disappear. So if you mask the grains, it's like trying to put like something over it, just to hide it. Easiest way to think about it, I'd say. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Noise reduction. I usually don't play with these, so do you know anything about that? or? Um, personally, I feel like... I don't play around with noise reduction too much because it's like I wouldn't I normally don't like crop my picture so that you're like zooming in on yeah. it enough to see the noise so yeah I just try to I try to make the like the good shot right from the camera rather than trying to force a good shot with Lightroom yeah and I think that's a really good point as well um very generally if you make a really good picture if you take a really good picture you wouldn't have to play with this a lot just because your ideal picture would be one where like there's as little noise as possible as little details that you don't want in there as possible, and that way you wouldn't have to play with this as much. The better the shot when you first take it, the less you'll have to edit it later on. Um, in this case, it was a night shot, and night shots tend to be super annoying because of how they come out. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, and a really random backstory about this shot. So, we shot at the top of a mountain, and we didn't bring a tripod with us. <laughs> oh, wow. That being said, a tripod <laughs> is usually something that you want when you're trying to do a night shot because you want it to stay as still as possible and that way you capture as much as you can because you're going to drop your shutter speed to like very low values and very generally, the lower the shutter speed, the more still something has to be. For this particular shot, we set a shutter speed of 30 seconds. Did you put on a rock or something? Um, we made it, okay, basically we brought a tissue box, a wallet, <laughs> and a phone. <laughs> and we placed the camera on top of the tissue box wall and phone and we made a makeshift tripod that we can oh, shoot nice, around. Nice. Very so yeah, like even if you don't have a tripod, it's still doable if you just decide to use like oh random things that are around the area. Try to make your camera as stable as possible and take that shot. One thing a couple things you're gonna have to be really careful about if you choose to do that though is things getting into your lens and making it dirty or damaging your lens, because that would suck. Your camera falling off the side of the mountain, of course, <laughs> if you kick it. And yeah. like, <laughs> just random things happening, just because it's on the floor and like, not on a tripod. But yeah, sometimes it'll run into situations where you do have to do exactly that, like create makeshift tripod. Anyways though, um, back to the context of this. This is a 30 second shot, and yeah. Anyways, so let's look at the before and after now, after we've just kind of messed with it a lot. So over here, you're gonna notice the before. Um, I guess I'll just ask again. What do you notice is really different about the two shots now? Like, it's super defined now. Like, what do you notice from here that you don't see here? Or like, what do you see here that you don't see there? Blue sky. Blue sky. sky. What was that? The sky. The sky. Okay. <laughs> like anything else? The lights are more defined. Lights are more defined. I guess it's prettier. It's prettier. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's just kind of like the very general gist of like what happens when you play with Lightroom and you get comfortable using controls like you can add more colors, make more definition to details, really make things pop, and like you can crop images, okay? Like of course cropping is super important. Let's say like you ever had random hand and a really nice shot, like you're not gonna want that there. But yeah, um, last thing I really want to talk about is the copy paste effect. So this is, if you hold control shift C, it'll make this pop up. This will literally copy whatever settings you choose to copy. So I have all these things copied, which are global effects. Um, if you want to add local adjustments, it'd be here. <coughs> but I've already clicked every global effect. So you're gonna copy it, click on random picture, X, Control Shift V, and it'll immediately Whoa. apply the effects to the picture wow. itself. Nice so this guy. If anyone has me added on Facebook, <coughs> This is one of the pictures that I used, and this is not the final product. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, the, the original product was this, where the colors wouldn't pop out as much as like that. Um, I would pull up my original, my actual final one, but I have no idea where it is right now. It's okay, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait one sec. Let me pull it up, actually. Just so you can kind of see like the difference between um, different ways of editing and things like that. Okay, um, you're gonna also notice some issues with the original shot, like after you're, ed you're done editing. Okay, so I'm gonna reset this. So reset just takes away everything that you've ever done to the photo, so it restores it to the original one. This is the original shot, this is the after shot. <coughs> so, wow. 
messing with skies and things like that, you'll notice that like, oh, the blue is definitely a lot more defined. Defined clouds a lot more, a lot more white. Um, yellows pop out a lot more. But also you're gonna notice one thing that pops out a lot. It's the fact that it's super grainy. Yeah. Remember yeah. how I said like, the second you blow up a picture that's really grainy, um, the grains become much more defined. If I were to make this smaller, um, then you wouldn't notice the grains as much. Yay. Right? Versus like this. So again, keeping grains in mind, um, that's something that you're going to want to compensate for based on how you want to display it. But yeah, that in itself is how you would edit like a landscape photo. <coughs> and I have like 18 minutes to very briefly go over how to edit a <laughs> portrait photo. <laughs> Look, so I'm going to go ahead and use my computer down here yeah. to... Okay, let's see. So again, um, I'm gonna import a new photo. So again, you're gonna go to File Import. You're gonna find your photo wherever it may be. That's not the right one. Um, this is a photo I haven't worked with either, so bear with me as I try to figure out how to do this. Was this the same shoot that Malika did? Yeah. You went look. together? Yeah, we went together. Okay, um, I'm gonna I'm choose gonna this go one. Invite me next time. So I'm import yeah, this one, yeah. and you're gonna start developing, right? So again, I'm gonna go through this super fast, so don't hate me. <laughs> so first thing I do is crop, okay? Crop the image, make that random hand disappear. Um, maybe make it a little closer, make them all a little more defined. And yeah, just use your rule there, it's the best of your knowledge to decide how to do this. And then after that, generally it's exposure. I don't think exposure actually needs to be changed too much though. Contrast a little bit. Cause there's that annoying light again. Like, yeah, yeah, the annoying light over the background. Okay. You're gonna notice that the annoying light over the background is one specific spot. So what would you do to compensate for that? Any ideas? Try to cover it using that tool where um, you get the black background and overlay it. I guess. But then would it like cut into his shoulder? Mm, he doesn't need a shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's go ahead and see what happens when you go about doing that. Um, just very quickly. <laughs> So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna go ahead and affect it. Oh. So then again, you're gonna see you're, you're totally right though. Um, it does in fact cut into the shoulder. So that's one thing you're gonna be want to be really careful about. If you're gonna be compensating using the <coughs> what's it called the spot removal, um, <laughs> then you're gonna want to be very careful about accidentally taking something out within the picture that you don't want it to be taken out. Like the shoulder. Like the shoulder. <laughs> so that being said, when you don't want to take something out but you want to decrease the effects of something, you want to use the brush effect. So the adjustment brush is what I'll use. Um, again, you can choose the select overlay mask and it'll allow you to see what's going on. And a um, really cool fun fact, if you scroll your mouse, it decreases or increases the size of the brush. And let's see. Okay, that doesn't look good. Give the hate on. <laughs> <laughs> this is not something that's too easy to work with. Uh... Yeah, I'll try my best just very briefly. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna make like very small edits for now, but yeah, it's something you can fine tune later on, like once you have more time, so make the major edits, and then like run through it really quick, quickly, like make all your major edits quickly is what I like to do, and then like start spot tuning everything later on. So um, yeah, that's something that was very noticeable. Another really cool thing about the brush is that you can make other things in the background disappear. So let's say you want this annoying little thing right here to disappear, just make it disappear. <laughs> Like, just blacken it out, or um, make it less defined, for sure. And something I like to do is I like to drop saturation on it so it's not popping out in colors, basically at all, at this point. <coughs> um, you can also decrease clarity to make it disappear a little more. And then on the opposite end, you can choose to paint the subject over with the adjustment brush and make him pop out more. <coughs> so again, uh, mask overlay. And let's say you want him to be more, um, a little more exposure, I guess, or like, uh, what would work here? Clarity a little bit. But yeah, just trying to play with the different settings, um, just to make him pop out more from the background. Hmm. And yeah, just going back and just playing with the photo as much as you can. So let's kind of see what we've done already. We've kind of made the background disappear a bit, made the subject pop out a little more. Um, let's say you want to work with the puff of smoke. Um, if, you'll, if you didn't notice already, I like working with the adjustment brush a lot because it allows you to apply like local things, especially in like a picture like this where there are multiple parts. 
that you might want to work with separately. So let's say we want to apply something purely to this poke, right? Um, let's say we want to make it a lot more clear, make it pop out more. You can just add clarity to it, maybe add a little more blue to it, <coughs> or, yeah. But yeah, you can just do different things with the colors and such, but yeah. As you can see, as you're learning to get more comfortable with different controls, you have a lot more degrees of freedom as you learn like, oh, what do you want to locally control or like, what do you want to globally control? But yeah, um, that's basically it for my Lightroom workshop. I just wanted to go over very briefly the different controls and different ways you can work with photos. Um, yeah, is there anything else that you want to like ask me? Is there, are there any questions? I know I went over that super quickly. It's yeah. really technical, but do you know the difference between exposure and gamma? No, I don't. Okay. I think um, Gamma has something to do with like the type of light that's coming out um, oh. on your actual screen. Oh, okay. So yeah, I think that's what it is. I know that on my desktop, I think, um, when Gamma is on or off, like the light literally will either hurt my eyes or not. <laughs> Based on, it's just something to do with the light that's coming off the screen, I believe. Gotcha. Yeah. As for exposure, I think it's a lot more like just trying to deal with like the whites and pulling out the whites right. and everything at once. Yeah, um, any other questions, really briefly? Or like, very generally, I think the Lightroom workshop is supposed to go the entire hour. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. We could we could cut it off early. Yeah, I mean, um, otherwise I would just be working with this portrait. And if you want, I can show you some of the work that I've done before, just to show like the before and after, if you'd like. Oh um, no. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. I'm doing something in the background that I don't want, really want people to see. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. It's not safe for work. Oh, no, it's, it's safe. <laughs> it's safe though. Um, let's see. I guess I'll just go over like different shots and like I'll talk about what I've done before. Oh, Calvin, just as like a general overview question, mm -hmm. when would you use like um, Lightroom versus regular Photoshop, for example? I think that for Lightroom, it would be a lot more for if you want to touch up photos versus mm. like hardcore heavy duty recreating an entire photo. Um, I imagine Mike would know a lot more about this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, is that generally true? I think. Yeah, I think Lightroom is mainly like you're not really messing with it as much. Photoshop is definitely mm -hmm. like a lot more intensive. Um, I think like Photoshop's more generative, whereas Lightroom yeah. is like more so. You have you already have your. Your, you know, your clay, and you're just trying to mold it into. Yeah. Oh, exactly. all right. All right, yeah. sure, sure, nice. So let's say, like, I guess for example, um, hold up, let's talk about. <laughs> all right, I'm looking at shots that I took before. <laughs> I've changed so much in my style <laughs> since back then. But um, okay, let's talk about this shot. So like. Aww. If I wanted to create, if I wanted to add a dog in the background, it's not possible with Lightroom. Like, you literally cannot add features. All you can ever do is mess with the features in here. So with this one, I took the reflection that they have here, and I increased the clarity. Um, I made the colors here pop out a lot more. Things like that. Like, you're just trying to affect it and create, like, a certain effect of destroying details or adding. Or, like, in, I guess enhancing details? Enhancing. Yeah. I like it. Um, yeah, random shots. Tell them to clear the mirror. And this one, um, it's another one, <laughs> like, you, yeah. <laughs> but I guess I'll just show, like, random shots I've taken for, um, shots like this. Oh, like, oh. Yeah, Donald. Yeah, things like this, like, you're just, oh wait, there's also some random pictures in here for no reason. Um, but yeah. Aww. Let's see. Oh, um, there's also this one that I really like. So this is a kind of spur of the oh. moment shot. <laughs> Um, I didn't edit this one too much, but then um, I did make like the guy pop out a little more than in the background. Which one are you? For this one, it's a little more interesting. I played a lot more with the colors in this one. If you'll notice that like the yellow and the blue, yeah, blue is a lot more defined. Yeah, like different shots like that. And these are pretty old. I don't think they're reflective of how I tend to edit nowadays. But if we jump to Skid Row, if you ever go to this area, the colors here will never be this vibrant. Like, to put it very plainly, like, this is super saturated colors to make it pop out a lot more. And then, like, Whoa. I made him gray versus, like, the colors here, um, blue. Um, yeah, just trying to mess with different photos and things like that. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it, though. I guess the very gist of it, if you ever want to use Lightroom, I'd say just learn what all the different <coughs> controllers do and just start experimenting with it. 
And like as you get more comfortable with it, you'll start learning how to like quickly edit photos and like apply certain adjustments that, that you'd like to do. And yeah, if you ever want to learn how to take photos though, that's without that's not in the scope of this workshop. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something that you're always gonna have to learn on your own. But yeah. Otherwise, uh, any other questions for me? What's your favorite like um I guess like subject to take pictures of, like landscape or portraits or what? Um, I think personally, I've t I've done a lot of portraits in the past, so that's something that I feel comfortable, like at least comfortable with. I'm a lot more familiar with it. With landscapes, I am less so, so I'm leaning a lot towards like trying to learn how to take better landscapes and things like that. I'm like the opposite. Portraits are hard for me. <laughs> uh, okay. We'll we'll share each other. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's <Yeah>. good. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Portraits and landscapes are pretty different because portraits are very subject based, versus like landscapes would tend to be like extremely broad subjects versus like a single area yeah last thing i should probably talk about are the presets which i didn't mention at all <laughs> which are actually super important so presets essentially save all the different settings that you've created um shoot i totally didn't think about this earlier but <laughs> let's see it's okay i forgive you yeah so like these are predefined presets within lightroom um, you have all these different ways to like change the picture immediately and apply certain effects immediately. So like you can just kind of go through them and like you'll notice that they apply different things. These are not ones that I created. On the other hand though, let's say you wanted to create a preset, right? Um, let's say you wanted a preset that for whatever reason made it really yellow, increased exposure a lot, dropped contrast like crazy, and <coughs> decreased shadows. Let's say you wanted to save all these settings because you have like four different photos of the same guy in the same situation and you want to just blanket apply everything. One choice that you can do is to create a preset, define the preset, include all these different things that are here. Um, again, these are all the global ones and then the, less, um, the local ones are not in this case. You will go ahead and title your preset like, oh, random preset, nice. and then you'll create it. And let's say I imported another photo. But basically, you can take the preset, double click it, and it'll apply all the settings that you've already added onto that picture. So you can predefine something. Let's say, like, six months ago, you created a preset that you think would work perfectly for a photo now. If you save the preset, you can jump back to it, look at all the settings, and then just apply it right there. So presets are a way of saving all the settings that you've set for another photo edit and just keeping it, like, archived. Um, personally, I have presets for, like, portraits sometimes. Um, like I have ones that affect the greens within the background, let's say like it's a foresty feel, you can make all the greens pop out and all the other things that aren't as important, less defined, like immediately, and then you can start working from that square versus like starting from the very beginning, trying to do all those edits and just not really like knowing if you're creating the same feels before. Um, I think just very generally, if, you ever, if you've ever seen a photographer like with uh, recurring themes within their work, most likely they're either working with a preset or they just know their workflow well enough such that they recreate the same feel every time. Um, I want to say like it's likely a preset, I don't know though, but um, yeah. Yeah, that's the last thing I wanted to mention. So yeah, that's presets and everything else. But again, I'm just going to go ahead and ask, does anyone else have any questions for me or anything? How long have you been doing photography? <laughs> Wow. Um, That's I when think... you know it's long. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think two years. Uh, I started. Oh, wow. I started when I got to college. So. Damn. It hasn't been too long, I guess. Done for eight years. years. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, let's say we take this one and let's go ahead and find our preset. Random preset. We go apply it. Whoa. And, it Ooh, and like you'll notice, I have other ones here, like oh, city portraits above bomb shelter one. Um, these two were from. Circle K shoot, actually. Mm -hmm. City portraits are like from Circle K fan shoot as well. You know this Walt Disney concert hall? That's like a certain specific area that I like shooting at Walt Disney concert hall. <laughs> if I want to, I don't know, make someone else stand in the exact same place at the exact same <laughs> time or whatever, I could just apply this like it'll apply the exact same fil filters and everything else. But yeah. <coughs> that is everything for me. Um, again, yes. I'll open the floor to any questions. You can ask about Lightroom or cameras or me or anything. So feel free to ask about anything at this time. What do you work with, like well, camera? I work with a Canon T5i, and I shoot with a 50mm. 
Pick slides. Cool. Though I do want a different lens though, because uh, yeah. Get prime lens. Yeah, yeah, prime lens. They're fun. They're good in low light. I actually want a zoom one right now. A uh, zoom one? I'm looking at a 24 to 85 mil. That's like a Oh, I, I think I have one of those. I have one of those for a yeah. my Sony. Yeah, any other questions? Would you say your style has changed in terms of editing? Um, I think my style has changed in that I've become a lot more conscious of how much I'll drop the darkness and shadows and stuff like that. And like learning how to map was one thing that I picked up at one point. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, it has this foamy kind of feel. Um, <laughs> beyond that, I've actually started working. <laughs> it's a slight trick, but then um, let's say I increase exposures a lot. I'll sometimes actually zoom in and I will brush up the eyes and the mouth and you'll increase clarity. The point of this is so that you can make the eyes and the mouth pop out a lot more because generally those are things that you like to see in a portrait anyways. Like you like to see someone's eyes, you like to see their mouth, like their smile and stuff like that. So like just those general features that you really want to pop, like I've gotten a lot better at noticing why I want to really stand out from the picture. So yeah. Anything else? Anything? Everyone, give it up for Calvin. Woo! Round of applause. Great stuff. Thank you, Calvin. Um, I know that was probably a lot of information, but again, the best advice I can give you is become really familiar with the controls. Just practice and Play around experiment, it. honestly. Like, I think <laughs> there's some really amazing people in the photography club at UCLA. Like, maybe go out with them, shoot with them. If you like their work, ask them, like, oh, like, how'd you do, how'd you do that, essentially? Um, and you know, everyone here, I think, has just experimented a lot. Like, regardless of wherever they're at, like, they might be advanced pros or whatever, but everyone had to start with experimenting somehow. So don't be discouraged if this was a lot. This took me, like, the span of two and a half years probably to learn. Um, yeah, this did not happen in a day. <laughs> and I'm still learning. So, yeah, if you have any comments for me later on, feel free to reach out to me, Facebook, whatever. Yeah.